welcome to Tri-Cities Community Television. I'm Nancy Furness and we're filming on location today at Fountainhead Network in Port Coquitlam and this program is funded by TELUS Optic. So I'd like to just start by acknowledging that we are on the traditional, ancestral and unceded lands of the Coquitlam First Nations and um, who continue to live uh, on these lands and protect these lands and waters and all that is above and below. So this afternoon, we are joined by Coquitlam City Councillor Terry Towner. So thank you so much for joining us today, Terry. Good afternoon, Nancy. Thank you very much for having me. Well, it's a pleasure. And we wanted to start off today with some, a, a really interesting story. You've recently undertaken quite an epic running challenge, <laughs> and I'm hoping that you'll share with us a little bit about where you ran and also how far you ended up running. Okay, so just to backtrack a little bit, my whole life, every decade of life, starting in my teens, I have gone back to running. It's a, I love to run, but I've, life takes you in different directions. But now in my 50s, and my early 50s, I was getting back into running. And in 2020, after you know a bit of a health scare and some surgery and recovery, I started running again. And then in August of 2020, I was reading our local newspaper, the Tri-City News, and I saw a front page story of a, Poco, a Port Coquitlam woman who had just finished running every street in Port Coquitlam. Mm -hmm. She had qualified, I believe, for the Boston Marathon, and then because of the pandemic, it was canceled and she couldn't go to the marathon. And she'd heard about this, it's not really an app, it's web-based, but it's called City Strides. And there's a whole bunch of running apps out there that you use to track your runs, GPS, that would merge over onto City Strides. And I was very intrigued by her accomplishment and running every street in Port Coquitlam. So then I thought, you know what? I live in Coquitlam, it's a beautiful city. I represent the city. And I will see if I can run every street in Coquitlam. And Coquitlam is quite a bit larger than Port Coquitlam. It's larger and it has more mountains and hills, but I didn't look at it that way. I just thought I'll run my city. So I set myself up on city strides and I chose Strava as my running GPS app. And I already got credit for a few streets in Coquitlam because I'd used it, used Strava before. And uh, I just dove in and started running the streets. City Strides doesn't give you credit for running a street until you run every meter of it. So every single node. So you can't just run Austin Avenue from Mariner to Mundy. You have to run Austin Avenue from Mariner all the way to the Burnaby border. So it was very addictive. I would go for my runs, turn on my Strava app, kind of map out a route ahead of time, and I would come home to see, I'd go on my laptop to see if it merged properly into City Strides. And I would find out that I forgot to backtrack half a block to close a loop or something. And you don't get credit for the street until you run all of it. It's like running around the city with a purple crayon. It would turn the map of City Strides purple where you ran, where I ran. So there'd be a blank where I, where I missed a spot. But I could just get out, park my car, run that block, oh, and then turn, right. and then now I'm finished. I was wondering because I thought it would be very confusing. Like, how do you remember which streets you've run and which ones you haven't? But that sounds like a really nice app to kind of keep track of all of that and make sure that you've covered all bases, so to speak. It was great. So in addition to turning the visual, the map, purple as you ran it, it kept track. So Coquitlam has 1,100, 1100 and something streets. Yeah. And it would keep track for you completed streets and progressed streets. And as soon as you it completed one, it would, you know, the number would flip over to completed. And as it turns out, I started in August of 2020 and I finished Coquitlam Streets in March of 2021. And it was so rewarding and fun and addicting that I then decided to run every street in Port Moody and then Anmar, Valcara. And then I finished up by running every street in Poco. Wow. It got very addicting. But it was really easy with the app telling me how many more I had to do. And it sounds like, okay, so Coquitlam, you've got lots of mountains and hills and, and more the same. Oh. 
lots of hills going up and down, and then um, Co Port Coquitlam, I guess you end with the flatter, like not so, not so mountainous or hilly. The only hilly part really in Poco was Citadel, right. just do, running around the, the Citadel Heights. So how long in, in total, what was the distance that you ran? All together, because I had it all on Strava and I just downloaded all my data and put it into Excel, mm -hmm. I ran over 2,200 kilometers. Wow, that's in, a lot of marathons. My longest one was 23 kilometers. That's when I did all of Belcara in one day wow. and some of the more further away streets in so Port Moody. You worked up to the 23 kilometers. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. Can I ask so. what inspired you to do this? Like you said, you've always been a runner, but there must have been something that really inspired you. You mentioned the woman who had run all the streets in Port Coquitlam. Um, is there any other reason why you decided to sort of at this time take that challenge on? It was a combination of things. I find the, the story that Mario Bartel did in the Tri-City News, I wish I remembered the woman's name, but I don't know her that and I was getting my fitness back mm -hmm. and I'm the kind of person that I like goals. I like having a goal. I'm training for a, the BMO full marathon for May 1st and I like having the, the training program ahead of me and when to run hills and when to run distances and when to take a recovery week and I like that. I like having the goals mm -hmm. and, I, and I needed something to, something healthy to sort of help me through the pandemic. I mean, I went from being super, super busy with two active teenagers and tons of sports and extracurricular, being a really busy uh, city councillor in Coquitlam, a very busy growing city, mm -hmm. attending a ton of events there, and being very, having a very full schedule. And now, all of a sudden, there wasn't. No sports. Public policy and meetings still carried on in my role as a city councillor. But all of the festivals and cultural events and meeting with the seniors and fundraising and all of that, all of those kinds of activities were gone. Right. So my day all of a sudden had so much more time. Right. And I pursued some of that time in doing a lot of webinars and learning more about you know, our Indigenous past and trying to use that time to learn about you know, issues that were popping up through, more so with the pandemic. But I needed to get out there and burn yeah, off some energy. For sure, it's a lot of time. If you have a lot of Zoom meetings, and I know a lot of us were sitting behind a computer a lot more than we normally were before COVID, um, that's a lot of downtime or a lot of sitting time. So what a wonderful way to get out and be active, um, both for your physical health and, of course, for your mental health as yeah. well. Right? Yeah. It's, it's a really important. Now, um, you know, it sounds all wonderful and you're so enthusiastic, but there must have been some challenges that you had to face and overcome as well when you were undertaking this huge run. There were some challenges. I, I, as a city councillor, I, I view things through a different lens. And so some neighbourhoods are less walkable. Okay. They're less pedestrian or friendly runnable. <laughs> or runnable. There were some streets that I didn't overly feel safe running. And then you may need to improve those. Can They're mostly our older neighborhoods. Was it because of um, lack of sidewalks mm -hmm. or traffic or lighting? Or? Lack of sidewalks, lack of lighting. Mm -hmm. And I mean, most normal people don't run along Lougheed Highway, but I had to. Running along Lougheed Highway around, along the Riverview stretch was nerve wracking. Right. Right. I did that in the middle of the night with a friend who drove along beside me. But that isn't, I would never, you know, Make that your regular advocate <laughs> to make that more runnable because who would run there but there were some there's some of our neighborhoods that in the back in the day the sidewalks weren't there driveways and pedestrian visibility isn't there and I had some injuries along the way there was one day I was out and I got hit by a drone which so, is incredible there, um, but yeah. can you tell us a little bit about that how how did that affect your runs and, and what happened i had to take five weeks off activity wow. i was actually riding my bike and i was riding through a elementary school property and I, there was nobody there and uh this fellow with his drone was behind the school so he didn't see me coming and i didn't wow. see him and no word of a lie the drone came out of nowhere wow. and knocked me and I ended up with a concussion and whiplash, and I was in the ER twice over the next week. So that was one. That's a 
element that unexpected challenge unexpected got set me back yeah. but you know you have to take concussions seriously so you do, you I had do. to do that and there was a couple of other little injuries along the way but other than that it was an overly positive experience well, you seem to have weathered it well. Speaking of which, how was weather? Like, did you run rain, sun, night, day? Yeah, I, I, I ran in the heat dome in the summer. I ran in snow. I ran in the pouring rain. I would run early morning, midday, evenings. But there was benefits of all of those. I loved running at night over the Christmas season and seeing the Christmas oh. trees going up and the lights oh. coming out of the house houses. I loved running in the summer. There's more people out in the yard and, you know, sprinklers to jump through and <laughs> people are outside. So they're, they're chatting to me and waving to me. There was the pros and cons of running in every time of day and every, every bit of weather. Right. I was like running in the morning when I mm -hmm. did run and I think you're inspiring me to start running again, <laughs> but um, in the morning when it's a little bit cooler in the summer and then I guess um, worrying about being reflective, um, having reflective clothing and that sort of thing. So there's lots of different considerations. Carrying water, um, did you, I guess you'd have to carry water with you depending on how far you were going. And Yeah, I have my hydro pack that I would wear and I would share my location with people too when I would right. go out on a run. Because right. I ran 99% of my runs by myself. And, you know, some of the streets in Anmore and upper, upper levels, I'm by myself, kind of, not all the streets that I had to run are residential. Right. I had someone drive along beside me when I ran down from the Metro Vancouver water at the top of Pipeline, right. all the way down. I had somebody with me there. It's very secluded. Yeah. I don't live in fear, but at the same time, you have to be safe. So I would always share my live location with people when I was out, so they knew where I was. That's a good idea. Yeah. You know, um, did you run up hills or down the hills? Both. Okay. <laughs> there were some neighborhoods where I strategically asked for help from a friend. I would park at the top and then run down and then get a ride back up to, okay. my, car, to my car. And quite a few times, I, would, I have an e-bike. I find commuting to and from City Hall with my e-bike, because I live at the top of hills. Yeah very good so I bought an e-bike so I could be a commuter so some days I would use that I would mm -hmm. you know park my e-bike at the bottom of the neighborhood right. drive to the top make my way down Burke Mountain Westwood Plateau and more and then ride my e-bike back up to my car it's a lot of strategizing yes isn't it? Like yes you get all each street in there somehow it was and it was addicting mm. and then some days I would end up going out longer than I'd planned or I didn't really map it out that well and I would run back up the hills. And I ran all the way up Heritage Mountain Boulevard from oh. Ioko to David. I was oh. feeling extra strong one day and I <laughs> ran that whole thing. Guess you've got to do it when <laughs> those days hit, right? It feels good. Yeah and I think you've seen um, well I guess all of the Tri-Cities from a very different perspective mm -hmm. now it's totally different running than it is driving through in a car or even on a bike. Can you tell us a little bit about some of the things you saw or some of the new things you learned about the Tri-Cities? The number one thing that I really, I don't know if I learned this, but it was an observation, was the incredible amount of community spirit oh. in all, especially the Poco, Port Moody and Coquitlam. The painted rocks, all people would put them in their gardens and on the boulevard, the hearts in the windows, right. the shows of public support for our healthcare workers, the frontline workers. There was so much of that. There was neighborhoods that had flags in their cul-de-sacs that were made, be calm, be safe, be kind. There was so much community spirit. I couldn't believe the amount of flags and signs and posters and, and rocks and hearts that I saw. And um, the number of adopt a street signs that I saw throughout every neighborhood, people and community or community organizations have adopted streets, and that was very far all through Coquitlam, Port Moody, and Coquitlam, and that just to me shows a level of pride and right. community engagement. And I just thought that really, again, I know that the Tri Cities were an amazing place to live. We have a very huge volunteer base and lots of dedicated people in our communities but 
seeing it as I ran through was very, very heartwarming. I think you get a whole different level of appreciation maybe. We're always in such a hurry, you know, coming and going and, and we don't necessarily see these things, see the finer points of, of the details as, as you go by. Um, so, you know, in times of COVID, you're seeing all this support, you're doing something that's very good for your own mental health and physical health. Do you have any tips or any guidance for others that maybe don't have your level of energy or maybe the capability to get out and run? Um, how else have you coped during COVID? My advice to people is running isn't for everyone. It can be hard on the body. It's not friendly to our joints if, you know, right. but walking, walking takes longer. But even when I was getting, finishing up recovering from my concussion, there was a couple of neighborhoods I did walk, you know, just get out the fresh air, the walking, the the trees, the, the green space that we have in the Tri-Cities, the rivers, the streams, the mountains, the forests. We are so blessed with beautiful parks, regional parks, city parks. My, my advice is just don't worry about comparing yourself to anybody else or how fast you are. Just park your car mm -hmm. and head out. And you'll, you'll learn something every time you get out if you change your neighborhood. And also, I guess, brings to mind the importance of protecting our green spaces and um, working towards livable communities and all that connectivity and maybe someday not having to run on all those busy roads, but being able to run on greenways or, um, you know, having some alternative ways to get around the cities. Oh, definitely. Um, so. That was an amazing journey, and uh, you know, it's it maybe turned out to be more even than you thought when you mm -hmm. started. And it sounds like you got so many great experiences out of it. What are the plans now? Are you planning on running somewhere else, or do you have um, any other plans to run? Well, to be honest with you, I, I did this, and I never did it for any kind of attention whatsoever, but it garnered a bit of media attention, sure did. and I'm still getting people who heard me on the radio or read the article contacting me mm -hmm. and asking them, what was that app called again? So I've been spending at least one or two people every week teaching them about City Strides mm -hmm. and helping people set their own goals. They want to walk all of White Rock or they want to run all of Pitt Meadows. So I'm helping people with that, which I really like. As far as my running goes, I am overjoyed that I have put on that many kilometers and my almost 54 year old body <laughs> is I did have a drone injury but that wasn't from running right. per se I'm still fit and strong and my body isn't giving me any issues so just next week next week I'm going down to Vegas I've never been to Vegas and I'm doing the rock and roll half marathon oh, it's gonna be exciting. and I'm super excited <laughs> apparently it's a really fun event and I alluded to this earlier I've signed up to run the 50th anniversary BMO Vancouver full marathon on May 1st. That's a huge... So that's 42.2 kilometers yes. in Vancouver, but I think it will be an amazing event because it's the 50th and it'll be post-COVID. Well, everybody will be celebrating, right? And it's a great time to take on that challenge. I've, I've done a, many of the half marathons, okay. but a marathon I have never. So I, I give you huge kudos for taking that on. Um, it will be looking forward to seeing some pictures as you're going along yeah. and hearing about how it goes. Um, I think you're off for another big adventure on that. I'm looking forward to it and my main goal is not to impress anybody with my time, is just to celebrate my able-bodiedness and my health and my ability to do it. And to get through a full marathon, I, you know, yeah. we give you credit no matter what the time is. Thank you. Yeah. So thank you for sharing that with us. That's a really lovely story and, and something that I think we need to hear during these times. You know, mm -hmm. we've all been kind of behind closed doors and maybe feeling a little bit down. So it, it's wonderful to hear when somebody can um, get above that and carry mm -hmm. on. So thank you. Oh, thank you. And I just want to maybe change, change gears. <laughs> A little bit here and talk a little bit about your other role. You're in your second term as city councillor for Coquitlam and today we don't, I don't really want to talk about any specific civic issues but more just getting to know um, Terrytowner a little bit more mm. and, and how you feel about things and how you approach things. 
So I guess just to start, um, maybe if you could give us a little bit of background. What in your own personal or maybe in your uh, professional, previous professional um, background, what are the elements that you bring forward to City Council? Like what helped you um, become a good City Councillor? Like what was valuable to you? I have just always liked people, being solutions oriented, um, trying, like, being a part of the solution rather than a cynic. Mm -hmm. I've always had, you, you alluded to my, my energy, I look back and I've always had so much energy and even as a teenager I would dedicate my extra energy to coaching or volunteering or being a part of groups or you know the student leadership council or something. I, I was never one to just watch TV. I've always just put my energy without even thinking about it towards other things. So then over the decades I was very involved in my community of Coquitlam and I um, figured it out the other day because I have my, my youngest child is graduating this June. I've served on 19 different PACs, wow. 10 years on the district PAC executive, mm -hmm. and a ton of other community initiatives that I was in even though I worked full time and I was raising my kids. And then I lost my job and people came up to me and said, you know, you, you'd probably be a pretty good city councillor. Would you consider it? And I first said no because I said, I'm not a politician. Right? right? But you like to serve your community. And so you know what? I gave it a whirl and I realized that on the doorsteps, talking to people, I loved hearing the different perspectives about issues and the different demographics and backgrounds of people and where they're all coming from. And so I don't, I have a human resources background, a nonprofit background, but I have just a real strong desire to keep learning and keep finding solutions and to be part of, to be solutions oriented rather than just complaining about something, try to be part of the change. Well, that kind of leads me to another question. Like um, right now, and I don't know if it's a result of, of what we've been through through COVID or if it's maybe what we're seeing south of the border, but it seems that we've become increasingly divisive in our approach to many different things. You sound like you're um, a people person and that you're very interested in listening and, and hearing what people are saying. So when you're at the city council table and things aren't going your way, um, how do you avoid you know, going down that path of being divisive or, or digging your heels in and, and not listening to the other side? Like, How do you kind of promote working together? I have learned over the years that we get, whether it be on a pack or on a school, you're coaching a team or at the city level, even at a family, a micro level, we get more done mm -hmm. when we work together. We all have common ground, every single one of us. We all want a sustainable future. We all want, you know, a good economy. We all want the same things, a sustainable medical system, safe pedestrian walkability in our cities. We all want that. But we, have, we all have different ways of, of arriving at that. I heard a really good analogy once during a campaign speech. She said, you know, we all want to get to Disneyland. Right. But whether you want to take the I-5, you want to fly direct, you want to take the Oregon coast, the whole, we all want to get to Disneyland. So let's find the best way to find those solutions. So, and the best way for that is to listen. And don't listen to respond, to listen. Because while you're listening, you, might, you, you can maybe think, oh, I never thought of it that way. And yeah, we're always going to disagree. We're, we're, it's amazing that we live in a democracy and we can vote and we can speak freely, but we have to listen. We are all going to have different opinions. If we all didn't have, if humanity didn't have different opinions, nothing would have ever have been accomplished. Right. Tough decisions had to be made over the decades in order to be where we are in society. But we have to listen and we have to respect when a vote doesn't go our way and respect that, okay, this is the way we're going and then it's over. It's, uh, this is the decision. So I, I think that's a really good insight and a really good approach to, because so often things can get contentious and then we stop and we don't listen. I think that's one frustration that I have is, is 
I don't know if it's, you know, I'm not going to say anything about it against media and social media, and, but the headlines, and a lot of people don't click beyond the headline, and they just don't, re or, they, or they don't read the full thing. Sometimes a headline, the goal of the headline is to grab your attention. So, and people, uh, you know, they're busy and attention spans aren't maybe That's what true. they used to be. And um, there's that temptation just to go with the headline. So yeah. I think it's a common problem now. And I don't know how we move back away from that three second sound bite yeah. or whatever we've gotten to now. So it's a big problem for sure. But can you talk a little bit about your um, expectations when you, you went in as a brand new counselor, not last time, but the time before, and you said that it wasn't never really your plan. Um, can you talk about what you expected to do as a city councillor? Is that what's happened? Or has it been quite different than what you thought it would be and in a positive way or in a negative way? Like maybe talk about some of your challenges that you weren't expecting as well. That's a very good question. Um, the learning curve was huge. Mm -hmm. So just because I'm a city councillor doesn't mean I'm an engineering expert or a, right. you know, a traffic expert or an expert on trees and the health of trees. Like, right. but I'm I making decisions right. on all these subjects. Yeah. And still, I don't I don't proclaim to be an expert. So you do a lot of meetings in addition to your right. council agenda to get a little more depth, or talking to the experts and talking to people and getting their input. So it, I don't want to say it was more work than I thought, but I really wanted to understand the issue fully. And that, especially my first couple of years, that took a lot of time. Right. Uh, I'm not saying that I don't take it seriously now, but I, I'm a little more familiar with the jargon and the terminology and the, and the trends the and where to go to get it, yes. Um, but it's more rewarding than I had envisioned. Oh, well, that's good to hear. It, it just really is. I just love seeing progress. And I, I also find it challenging, um, how do I word this, to try not to get caught up in the politics of it. Right. Right? Um, I love the fact that Coquitlam doesn't have parties. So trying to make things not Partisan. Right. We don't. I don't have to vote a certain way 100% of the time because my slate or my party, that's their stance. I People might think that I'm pro-development, but if I see a, a report come through on a proposal for a, a development and I don't think it's the right one, I will vote against it. I don't have to vote for it because I'm not part of a slate okay. or a party. But I've seen people over the years vote for something that they didn't think was the right thing because of a, a group. They, right, right. So that's being political. I think you have to find out what you represent as an elected official right. after listening to everybody. And even though there'll be the, the loud minority, mm -hmm. try to stick with what you feel is the best decision for the future. Because elected one. officials aren't yeah. just planning for now. Yeah. A lot of the decisions we make now, the shovels won't go in the ground for years. Yes. We won't even be around for when that infrastructure is built. It's a huge responsibility. Yes, but right. the voters of today are the ones that are maybe not happy about it, but you're making decisions for the future. So it's trying to stay true to your vision and what you think you want your city to look like down the road and for today of course but down the road too yes yeah no it's a lot of responsibility um, if you take it seriously and really do your homework it's uh, I think at the municipal level that's where so many changes can be made right it's a huge opportunity um, so I think and as you say it's like such a vast range range of things that you need to know about and and find out about and do your homework I, w I just want to say, I wish, I, anybody watching, the lowest voter turnout is for the municipal yes. elections. Yeah. And there is a municipal election in BC later this year, October 15th. But people get out in way higher numbers for federal and provincial. And that's great. But federal and provincial is, you know, immigration and airports and, right. you know, military and, and health. 
and education, but your city is your parks and libraries and police and fire and garbage pickup and it's your community getting a pothole fixed. So I would really like people to vote more, like get out, get the numbers out, to get the number, the percentage of voters out for the city because it affects your daily life much more than who you vote for as your MP. Well, this is great to hear because I agree. How do we get people out there? So a message like this really helps, I think, to like let people know the importance of the municipal level elections and how important it is to get out there and get your voice heard. It is important. And I think this is maybe a, a good place for us to wrap up. And I have one other question that I just want to ask you. As you mentioned, there's um, an election coming up October 15th. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we... Maybe we'll see some new faces and mm -hmm. maybe we won't, but what advice, just based on all that you've learned and, and seen and experienced, what advice would you give to anybody who is considering running for um, any of the city councils in the Tri-Cities? I would say know your why, like why are you running, okay. and then build the support up and rather than put down the current administration, right. bring what you want, to, campaign on what you want to bring. Okay. Don't do a negative campaign a on, well, you can be critical, like, mm -hmm. but, but rather than just putting down your, right. the people you're running against, just say what you will bring to the table. How will you be different? What's the change you want to affect? And, I just, and stay real, stay true to yourself. Sometimes it's hard, but I think at the end of the day, people, when they know who you are and what you stand for um, and where you're coming from, and it's genuine and sincere, that, that you'll, you'll make more of an impact that way. And let's support each other, you know. That's, that's a really positive <laughs> message, too, and something that's important. Like, why wouldn't we, right? We're all in this together, and I would love to see more women run mm -hmm. for local government. Yeah. I would love to see people of different socioeconomic backgrounds run different cultural backgrounds because we, I mean, even just at Coquitlam, we have the different array of long-term counselors, new counselors, mm -hmm. different ages, different backgrounds. And I think that's great. It brings for a really good conversation around our table. Right. But I think we need to keep having new voices come on so we keep having the different perspectives and you, you only makes you stronger yeah right? so the more we learn the more we understand humanity and where we're coming from and where we want to go we make better decisions well thank you so much it was really a pleasure talking to you and learning a little bit more about how you approach things mm. and um, hearing of the story about your epic run oh. so it's been a lot of fun and, and thank you for coming out and joining us this is Tri-Cities Community Television. Thank you.